And welcome to Manchester, where we've come to see if the second coming of Ricky Hatton is going to be the success he and his fans crave. And that is our main event. Ricky Hatton makes the long-awaited return to action, and this is no walkover for him. And Senchenko, remember, maybe 35, but he's lost just one fight. Big night, too, for Martin Murray as well. If he beats Jorge Navarro, his reward next April is a world title fight against Sergio Gabriel Martinez. And first up tonight, it is the hotly anticipated rematch between Scott Quick and Rendell Monroe. So Rendell Monroe, there was little between these two. In the opening couple of rounds of that first meet, Monroe remains confident he can beat the eight-year younger man. For the interim WBA World Super Bantamweight title, scheduled for 12 three minute rounds of boxing. So, beaten just twice in his career, Rendell Monroe brings significant experience game from fighting at European and world level. He was the first to beat the previously unbeaten European champion, Kiko Martinez, one of his biggest and best nights. That was to take the European title back in 2008, defended it five times, remember including another victory over uh, Kiko Martinez. But that shot of the big time came when he took on Terrazas of Mexico in a world title eliminator as well. And then he went on for that world title shot, but he was uh, outclassed by uh, Toshikegi Nishioka over 12 rounds. Scott Quick then still just 24, but his career trajectory has been rising considerably in the last couple of years ever since his hometown of Berry lifted that 13-year-old ban on boxing to allow him to uh, come back and compete on the home territory. The headlines have gone from local to national. And Glenn Catley is alongside me. It was unfortunate how the first meeting between these two ended. Who's your money on this time round? Quit, he's up. Sorry, yeah, Scott Quigg's up for this fight, Tim, and uh, he felt that he, he, he'd done enough in the last outing to, to, to pinch the decision. Obviously, the judges have seen it differently, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be one not to, not to blink with this one. Well, he has been down a couple of times in his career, Quigg, so... Look out. And this was against the guy called Villani, and then James Arthur had him down in the fourth round as well. So he isn't hard to hit. And Moreau has been talking about that in the eve, in the build-up to this fight. That's right. Quite a lot of success from the South Pole, uh, Rendell, at this moment in time. Marching forward, trying to stamp his own fortune onto the fight, trying to set the precedent, trying to dictate the pace, which is what he needs to do, you know? We need to see Scott Quigg against that Sable. We need to get to see that lead leg on the outside. That's where he's going to get his best chance of getting his shots off when his lead leg's on the outside. And as we know against the Sable, you need to throw plenty of right hands and left hooks. That's the shot they tend to be open for. Good start, though, this from Rendell Monroe in this opening round. And that'll give him plenty of confidence. Nice little body shot there, though, from, from, from uh, Quig. Just a reminder to Rendor to stay on your toes. Carl Frampton, of course, is jumping up the bit to get a shot at Quig. Feels he hits harder. Feels he's got the tools necessary, but it's, it's a great place to be. That's a good left hand then from Rendell Monroe. And again, another cause for Quig to be very wary as we said he's not the most difficult to hit there's been a lot of uh, talk in the build up to this fight about the defense of scott quick he is get outable as we see there but he finishes with the big punch himself 
But a good opening round that from Rendell Munro. Yeah, it certainly was. It won the, won the round purely on volume of shots, quality of shots, eye catching shots, certainly coming off by way of Munro. So let's just see the uh, capitalize on that great start. Right, so again, talking about showing too much respect. Monroe has fought that well since that uh, setback in the right in Japan, where he put up a really good account of himself. Jab over the jab, left hook, straight right hand down the pipe. All right. Yeah, nice and composed. Get the shoulders to the left. Let's have that right angle with your chin. We've got the whoop shield. Yeah. He's picked up the WBA International Super Bantamweight title this year. He stopped those essays in one for the first quick fight. So a great start from Munro in the first round. Let's see if he can continue that. Or if Scott Quigg has dis different plans. Nice little uppercut there from Quigg as Monroe was coming in. And nice little body shot, yeah. Yeah, that hurt then. Just caught him, Monroe, under that. And again. And again. Yeah. These short shots just sap your strength, Tim. They, they sap you. You take the wind at yourselves if you catch them right. And as a consequently, they, they slow the legs down. They take an awful lot out of you if you get them just right. Questions again talked about. Munro making this weight and how easy it's found to actually make the weight, whether it's been too much of a, a struggle. But he's up against one of the fittest guys there is out there at standing levels of fitness Scott Quigg has got. Just a bit more success from Munro in this, this, uh, this second round, Tim. Catching Rendell, Rendell still forcing forward, but Munro's catching him on the way in. Nice straight back, you know, straight backhand from, from Rendell, having said that. Yeah, both going about the business in a nice professional manner, not wasting any time, getting their shots off. Yeah. Nice little flurry Great there. Hook yeah. to the body again. His best work has come to Munro's body in the opening two rounds of this fight here. And Quigg moving nicely as well, Tim. He's, he's not static, he's continuously a moving target, making it very difficult for, for, for Rendell to get his shots off. You see, he gets his shots off and he's continuously moving, which is the right thing to do. Never be a static target. He's following his instructions from his corner uh, to the letter and to the word. And again, just look at that speed of hand then from Scott Quigg. But Monroe comes back with a left hook of his own. And I think that's what's been the difference in this round, that Quigg has been the quicker man on his feet and also the quicker hand speed as well. But we're still early on. It's in the second round. A good promise to start from, from Monroe, in the, Monroe in the first. But what a reply in so far coming back from, from, from uh, Quigg in the second. A little movement from Munro, he's just walking straight forward into range for Scott Quick. Who just moves, finds the angle, gets the left hook off. And again, he's out of there before Munro has time to set himself. And again, Mon sorry, Rendell throwing the shots, not getting through a lot, purely because of the, the tight guard of, of Quick and, and the foot speed of him. Well, hand and foot speed, hugely impressive from Scott Quigg in that round. Let's get a listen and see what this corner is saying. Well, here's some of the work to the body of Rendell Monroe. Looks at home taking those shots, but we're in round two when he's taking these shots. If we're six or seven rounds further on down the line That's when and he's taking those shots, That's then right. it's going to be a bit it different. It certainly is. It certainly is. Fairly fresh. You know, we're just going into the third round. He's fairly fresh now. But as you say, these shots, they do catch up on you. They do suck their legs. They take the energy away from you. So a good reply from, you know, considering the first round, which I gave to Munro. I've got it dead even going into the third round. Let's see... Uh, Let's see what Munro can come back, come back with now. But one thing's for sure, I think he realises now, going into the third, he's got a fight on his hands. Always in the back of his mind, 
from Rowe. The thought that he can get it is mad. 24 victories of Monroe's, 10 of them have been stoppages. So he does carry a significant amount of power. And Quigg has not stood still long enough in this fight just yet to actually sample what he's got to offer. Again, there's a nice distance in between because Monroe, you know, he's got a slight reach advantage there. He's not being able to score with these jabs. That's right, purely because of the sp foot speed of Quig. He's 32 years of age, Monroe. He's tasted life at the, at the top level. He really can't afford to even think about defeat here. It is that important a night for him. Equally as important as it is for Quig. What is good about this, Glenn, is to see British boxing in such rude health that we are getting bouts like this. That's right. This is a quality bout. It's nice to see. Again, the left hook to the body. Monroe again just soaks it up. Good little backhand, cheeky backhand stab there from 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 Rendell. And again, we can see that thunderous body shot going in from, from Quig. And that's the first time he's managed to unload a decent left hook, Monroe, but again, Quig is quickly on the move. And he's finding it difficult to double or treble up on these assaults that he starts there again. You can see he lands one and before he can get the second off. Quig is off and moving. That's right. You see Quig, Tim, he's giving himself angles. He's coming at... Although Munro's coming forward, he, he's making it difficult because he's, he's constantly on the move, making it difficult because he's, he's working off at different angles. It's making it very, very difficult for Rendell to plant his feet and let go of these big bombs. Oh! Landed a decent shot there and could work to the body of Quig. This is more like it. Pretty even round so far, Tim, in the third. Well, just ducking out of the way of that little onslaught then from Monroe. Yeah, great counter with the right hand then by Quick. Well, this is an enthralling fight, this Glenn. It certainly is. Pretty even so far, Tim, going into that third round. That was that right hand counter. Talk about then, maybe Monroe's got to switch to the type of performance that he put in, put in when he put on uh, Victor Terrazas, the uh, Mexican world title eliminator a couple of years ago. And those of you that remember seeing that, there was a vicious body assault that uh, ended that fight in the in the ninth round. Difficult to separate the two at the at the moment, though, Glenn. Good, st sorry, uh, good, good start from um, Munro in the first. I've got Quig winning the second and the draw of the third. So pretty, pretty even at this moment, but very, very entertaining, nevertheless. A little scrappy in these opening exchanges in round four, but again, Quig switching to work on Monroe's body. And when he lets those body shots go to him, he has a great deal of success. So, I'd like to see him do it a little bit more. Because he'd like that. to see him. He'd actually like to Ooh. see more of a sustained attack. That's right. A bit of a low blow then from from Monroe, but subsequently no complaints from from Quig. He, uh, I suppose he kind of knows the rough and the smooth of this game, but it definitely was a low blow. Unintentional, but nevertheless, it was a low blow. And sporadic, looks a little low again yeah. from Quick. Yeah, there's one apiece now. <laughs> Just, uh, 
A little retribution being uh, dished out for the one he took just a few seconds earlier. Monroe having the better of this round so far, round four. Not quite so much movement. We were talking about them constantly being on the move, creating yeah, the yeah. angles in the previous round, That's but right. there's not been so much. That's right. Quigston, he's opted just to stand still, and because of that, Rendell Monroe had a little bit more success. He's He's there in front of him, he's there to be hit. Then there's the right to the body, but it's just a single shot. Well, half a minute to go in the fourth, and uh, Monroe has landed more scoring shots. Trying to get into work on that rather well-guarded body of Monroe as he works with that right hook to the rib cage yep. of Quig. Just a bit, like you say, just a little bit, a bit more success in this round from him. Better for, round from Monroe. For sure, yes. He's the one trying to make the fight, you know, and at times Quig just seems to go in a bit of a shell. Doesn't need to do that. At times he's quicker, more dynamic. His footwork, I believe, is faster. So why he's standing there and, and deciding to trade it is, is, is a question of why that is. And there's the, the, the two hooks to the body, but again, in the opening first and second round, those were threes and fours. Now, at the moment, they're just ones and twos that's here. Right, that's right. That was a great shot from Quick, though. Just underneath that floating rib. They do, and we're going to say this time and time again, but they do sap the legs from. They drain your energy. Don't deny the straight arrows, don't invent them as should say. Put a bang straight down the middle, yeah? And don't get sloppy with that jabby point. He's been the constantly in the headlines ever since that defeat of Gavin Reed and follow up the WBA into the Continental title when he stopped Santiago Alioni. Had a couple of defences there. That primed him for the defeat of Jason Boo for the British title. And then Jamie Arthur, who arrived in February of this year before the first meeting of these two everything has been going according to plan on the career ascent of scott quick there again oh, digs okay. that shot right into the rib cage of monroe he's taken it there goes the left hook once yeah, again great great shots left hook right hand to the body sorry right hook to the body i don't even think uh, monroe see the shots even coming and again it's just testament to the hand speed of of, of, of quick when he decides to let them go Again, just slightly south of the border of that body shot. Really needs to land something of significance. Very nearly did with that uh, right uppercut then, Monroe. The emphasis swings back again behind Scott Quigg after the previous round, which Monroe had the better of him. But it's a bit like a yo-yo, this fight, Tim. One's coming good, but the other's coming good. You know, it's very, very well matched. He's trying and to again, stay on the move, Quig. And there's a little left up there from Quig, but again, just sort of going back to giving himself angles, making it difficult for Munro to plant his feet and get his bombs off. When, he, when, he, when he's consistently on the move, given and making it difficult, this is when he's doing his best work. And again, we're just seeing another example right there. And Rose complaining about that, but it was a good shot. Yeah, good shot. A very good shot from Quig, but it's just wound him up a little bit. Yeah, no doubt, because it was a it was a hurtful shot. No doubt he felt felt the shot. And, and standing there and just taking that selection of shots to the body. Left hooks and the right hand to the body. No. He's got no answer for it. That's right. Quig trying to come out of a body shot of himself, but Quig just smart enough, just quick enough with the extra foot speed just to get out of the way of it. Well, the younger man is having much the better round here. And again, we're just giving himself angles, Tim. It's nice to see this is nice boxing. 
good, sensible boxing. Oh, trying to come back with a left, a decent left hook to the body, oh. but that's a great combination. Ending with the right hand that pushes him back, Monroe onto the ropes. Well, that's a good comeback, though. Really decent was. uppercut with the right hand then from Monroe. For me, got to go with Quig with that. The eye catching, the, the better quality of shots were coming by way of Quig. All right, just got to watch that. You got to listen in. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, that's well. Yeah? You're letting him get it. Brendan's about the races here, son. You can't do nothing silly, this is to understand. All right, just got to stay a little bit sharper then, and keep moving and land shots. You've got to get nasty. Now that two punch body shot combination, and he's claiming. Was another, mm, well, well, make that look at it. It wasn't. It wasn't completely legal, that's was it? Right. It was a bit roundabout looking from that angle. Yeah, I get it. Was right intentional. So again, I've got him going into the sixth yeah. round, dead even, Tim. Again, we're getting a great fight, just as we've seen in the last outing. Round six of a scheduled 12 here for this interim WBA World Super Bantamweight title. He's got to stay out the way of these body shots, Monroe. Covered up well enough that time. Yeah, it's been a real chess match at times, Tim, this fight. And credit for both, they're both... Oh. Again, slightly low there from Quig. Doesn't have any time to complain, Monroe. He's just got to get in and get on with it. Well, there is, oh, again, just okay. a bit. Lightning hand speed. Right hand, a jab, a left hook. And I think that's what's been the difference between this fight and the last fight. Quick's just been quick on the feet, quick with the hand speed. Trying to seek out the body of Munro once again. He's doing his best to defend these assaults. Yeah. Now he's Good as he can. All of a sudden now we've just seen Quig trying to stamp There his... it is again. There's yeah. that right hand. That's right. The right hook to the body. Now we've seen Quig stop going back onto onto the he's coming forward now a little bit more. He's trying to press and force the issue. Trying to kind of show his strength in the fight. Not be dominant or dictated to. He's trying to trying to force Renda Munro back onto the back foot. Digging that right hand into oh, the body, and there's a left hook, yeah. and he's down! Yeah. Renwin Monroe goes down for the first time in the sixth round. A culmination of these vicious body assaults. That's right, we've seen it from round one, consistently throwing the body shot. Can he survive? This is the big thing, he's got a minute to go, left hook again, digs into the body. Monroe's got to dig in deep here. And he yeah, sinks right. to his knees again, and he's had enough. He weighs it away, he's not going to get up for it. He's finished in the sixth round, a culmination of those body shots. And Scott Quigg takes this interim WBA World Super Bowl Bantamweight title with a stoppage of his great rival, Rendell Monroe, in the sixth round. Great, great performance, that's him. You can encourage so much from that. You learn a lot from it. And he's going to do his confidence any arm high there, you know. Oh, you were talking about these punches, these strength zapping punches. That's right. He's been taking twos, threes, fours of them every round. That's right. Since the opening bell of the first round. That's right. And eventually they've they've took up, they've took the toll, they've caught up with him, and eventually the, you know he, he was stopped in the sixth round. And they really, really do. They were great, great punishing shots. There it is again. 
So from here, this interim WBA Super Bantamweights and title. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I'm sure world, everybody maybe. here in the Manchester arena would like to show their appreciation for the efforts of both of our professional boxers. Timekeeper Gary Grennan records two minutes 37 seconds of round number six as the end of the contest. The referee, Terry O'Connor, stops the contest because he feels that Randall Monroe was in no position to defend himself. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, your winner from the blue corner, from Berry, Scott Quick. Well, it's a really, really impressive performance that by uh, Scott Quigg. I mean, in your view, your opinion, he can go all the way, can't he? Oh, for sure. He's boxing well above his, his, his years, if you like, than, than, his, than his record would suggest.